Hi, everyone. Can you all hear me? Yeah? Great. Um, so uh, I'm Cassie Craddock. I'm part of our business development team at uh, Ripple. Um, I've been at the company coming up to about two years now, which almost makes me a veteran. Uh, we're about 350 big, um, and we have nine offices around the globe. Um, so this is our mission. Uh, Ripple Ripple is here to uh, remove friction from global payments. Now, the idea around that is really thinking about how do we make uh, money move in a similar way that data does today. Now, at the weekend, I was I play football, and uh, I wanted to share some data online, so I went to Facebook, shared a link, told my friends I'd scored three goals at the weekend. Hooray. Um, the challenge is, is if I need to send my friend $10 to Australia, I mean, that's going to take two to three days. Um, Ripple really want to be uh, somebody that's you know, solving for that and really enabling uh, money to move around the, glo the globe in real time. The challenge we have is that today there is no uh, universal way to, uh, to send money around the globe. Uh, banks, financial institutions use a, a number of different ways to make this more efficient. Um, but the reality is, is there's um, a number of different ledger systems. There's a number of different challenges when you're moving uh, money across uh, foreign exchange. Um, and the reality is, is that this, this can be challenging, time consuming, etc. This is just a, a quick example of what a, uh, a cross-border like, cross transaction looks like today. Now, essentially, what, what, what happens here is the financial institutions have to set up a number of Nostra or Vostra accounts. Um, the corresponding bank network means that there's often a lot of delays, lack of transparency in payment. Um, and the challenge around that is, is that from a customer experience standpoint, um, the bank, the financial institution are unable to clarify if the, the payments reach the end destination. They're also unable to clarify what amount of money is, is going to actually be received by the end beneficiary. Um, and that means that high amount of operational costs, uh, a lot of investigations in the status of the payment. Um, and it really does lead to a whole lot of uncertainty for the consumer and the financial institution. So um, Ripple devised a, a product suite. Uh, and we'll talk about um, XRapid in, in a little bit more detail. But the idea is that we're essentially building out a network of uh, banks, finance institutions. Today, we have 200 plus, um, all leveraging Ripple's technology to either process payments, i.e. send payments, to receive and forward on payments, or to leverage digital assets within their payment flows to really uh, truly get that uh, real-time experience. So this is just a, a, a little sample of, of what XCurrent looks like. Um, so this is XCurrent. Um, it, it powers end-to-end -end payments, and it has two main components. Um, first, it has a messaging layer, uh, which enables you to um, communicate with a, another Ripple-enabled or XCurrent-enabled um, financial institutional banks in real time. Now, that's kind of a, a real enhancement over other competitors. Um, it also comprises of a, a, another, uh, another component called the IL, ILP ledger, which is based on the Interledger protocol. And then that enables us to, to be able to really uh, access real-time uh, interbank settlement of funds. Now, the, bi the, the bi-directional messaging um, enables a, a couple of things. Firstly, um, it's transparency around the payment. Um, it enables us to um, disclose end-to-end -end delivery of fees um, and also timelines to the originator up front. Um, it also enables no payment failures because all of the transaction is pre-validated, i.e. that bi-directional messaging is communicated with the counterparties up front. When we execute a payment, it happens. It doesn't fail, um, which is a, a really cool and useful bit, bit of kit for our, for our financial institutions. Uh, and also, um, we have autom automated reconciliation in, uh, uh, embedded in, in XCurrent, 
which essentially says uh, you can trace the payment end to end um, and you can provide that customer experience and customer journey back to, to um, the end, end user. So this is just to talk a little bit about um, the, the atomic settlement. Um, what that means is, like, like, I, like I previously said, is that the, the entire transaction is settled instantly. And it happens either all at once or not at all. And because that pre-validation, um, it, it enables us to do, do a couple of things. It enables real-time payments. So we can settle funds in, in seconds, no matter how many transacting parties there are involved. Um, there, are, there, is no, there are there's no settlement risk. So again, the either, the, either the payment happens up, uh, the payment process entirely fails up front, or um, or it fails it fails up front. Sorry, that essentially removes all, all settlement risk. Um, and also, this is a 24/7, 365 um, service. So it's not something that kind of closes on a Sunday. Um, this, this happens every single day, every single minute, every single hour. Uh, which is a real enhancement from what, what banks and services can offer today. So um, now that we have this network of ex-current users um, that are sending real-time payments with one another, uh, we, built, we built out a, uh, a product called Xvia. And Xvia is essentially enabling um, people to access that uh, that network using a standardized API. Now, companies do, do this for a number of reasons. Firstly, integrating with Ripple once is far easier than integrating with 100 banks or financial institutions. Um, it's just a configuration effort when you want to expand into new territories. Uh, and secondly, it's, an, it's a very simple way to access the benefits that XCurrent offer um, with a very, very easy integration. So this is just a, a sample of our 200 customers. Um, as you can see here, there are a range of uh, tier one banks, tier two banks, uh, financial institutions, um, money service businesses. Um, and as we uh, grow as a business, uh, we're looking to diversify that with wallets, um, corporates, et cetera. So this is... Um, this is the main uh, focus for, for my talk today. And this is a solution that has been in production now for around about eight months. Um, and it's a, uh, a product that leverages digital assets within its payment flows. Essentially, the, the problem with um, some of the, um, the ways that we make payments today is that there's always a pre-funding element required. Um, and around uh, three, $3 trillion of of cash is just parked, sitting there, unable to be used um, because of exactly that problem. And um, so what we built was a product called XRapid that essentially says, please don't pre-fund anymore. Uh, leverage digital assets and most importantly, leverage XRP within your payment flow to really source liquidity on demand. We leverage XRP in XRapid as a bridge um, between two currencies. So say, for example, here uh, you're starting in US dollar, um, and you want to buy MXN, but you haven't got AM MXN in Mexico. Um, what we can do is we can leverage XRP and convert in and out and mo physically move the cash to Mexico in two to three minutes, whereas the reality is that that transaction without digital asset would take two to three days. Now, we can, we can provide an implied spot FX rate, um, but essentially, once we give the, once we give the, the spot, the FX rate, um, when you execute the payment, that's what the, what, that's what the end beneficiary um, will receive, despite any sort of volatility. So why, why XRP? So um, as you're probably going to see today, there are, there's a number of uh, different cryptocurrencies, digital assets, but XRP is really here for payments. Um, it has the lowest transaction cost. It takes three seconds to settle. Um, and it can do 1,500 transactions per second. 
Um, the reality is, is that we, we, need a, we need a currency that can do this in order to make global payments a reality. Um, and what we've seen from our customers who adopt this solution um, is a 40 to 70% saving on cross-border payments um, into Mexico, um, which is a, a huge benefit. Not only that, um, the time saving as well, which is truly uh, remarkable. So here's just a kind of uh, uh, the workflow of, of how XRapid works today. So you're starting with um, an originating bank or financial institution. You're starting in uh, dollars. You're leveraging XRapid to convert in and out of uh, XRP. You're moving across the XRP ledger and settling the funds in whatever currency is on the other side. What that means is that there's no, no reliance on correspondent banking, and you're leveraging crypto exchanges to be able to facilitate these payments. Now, this is a, um, this is a live use case that we have today. So we have um, a number of financial institutions that are using um, this exact use case, so being able to take money from the US and sending money to the Philippines. And Bittrex are coins, PH, are digital exchanges uh, that we leverage on both sides of the pond to be able to, uh, to facilitate that transaction. So here is um, a customer use case, uh, a, com a company called MercuryFX that are based in the UK, uh, leveraging Bitso and Bitstamp to be able to send payments to Mexico. Now, what the important thing here is, is that the exposure time to XRP is 90 seconds. But as I said previously, um, when, once we lock that X FX quote, and once we send that X, uh, once we uh, confirm the status of the payment, then the end beneficiary uh, receives ex the exact amount of MXN uh, that, that, that was promised. Now, for us to be able to, um, to offer a service like this, um, there are a lot of moving parts. So firstly, we need to ensure that the liquidity in market is appropriate. Um, so we work with market makers, we work with OTC desks. We also need to make sure that the exchanges are, um, are, are happy to be able to facilitate this kind of real-time on demand. Um, we also need to be able to uh, provide customers with uh, transparency in a payment. So there's a lot of moving parts that we need to work, work on um, in order to be able to get corridors up and running. Uh, today, we're live in uh, Mexico and Philippines for this solution. Um, but our ex-current solution is available in 40 plus currencies, uh, countries, sorry. And that's a wrap. Thank you.